I bout you none. How's that for a new intro, huh? But at any rate, hey guys, it's Lord here, back in with another review, and today we'll be taking a look at the Four Horsemen Studios Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus from the advent of Decay Wave, if you want to call it that. It was almost 50 figures. And those of you who are eagle-eyed viewers of this channel are probably thinking, Overlord, didn't you already do a video review of this figure? And for those of you who have been paying attention, yes, you are correct. It was, in fact, the first video review I ever did on this channel. But since we are approaching my 10-year anniversary here on the YouTubes, not particularly of this channel, that is, I decided what better way to celebrate my evolution as an action figure reviewer than to go back and take a look at some stuff I took a look at prior, not only on my first channel, which those of you who have been paying attention also know what happened to that, mm, but also this channel, because the first year of this channel I did things a lot differently. My videos I don't think we're quite as up to par as they are now. In my opinion, I feel I have evolved as an action figure reviewer. So here we are, and there he is, the mascot of the channel himself, who is still the mascot of the channel. I may have made some changes to my profile picture and my intro, but the mascot of the channel remains the same because, spoiler alert, I freaking love this figure. One of the first Mythic Legions I ever got. Uh, my initial Brother Mandibulus was actually courtesy of good buddy Dismania65, who let me piggyback off his pre-order. I pre-ordered one through him, but my dad, aka Mr. Brian, was cool enough to let me have the one he got during the initial in-stock sale for this wave, so I could get him a little early. And I didn't have to wait. So, shout outs all around. Because, yes, this guy was released not once, but twice. Because the Four Horsemen are awesome and care about their fan base. Just gonna reiterate that. They're awesome and care about their fan base. So, all of you who complain about the in stock sales, they will give you a chance to get what you want at some point. You just gotta be patient. Patience is a virtue, especially with this line, because the secondary market prices, there's no mercy going on there whatsoever. But the way Advent of Decay rolled out was, first and foremost, there was an initial Kickstarter campaign for this wave because it introduced the new female body type, or, you know, smaller male body type. We don't judge here. And... What that did was give the Horsemen a whole new library of parts to utilize for future releases, which we've seen used many a times at this point in time now. But after that, they did put some extra stock they had up for sale on their website, Four Horsemen, uh, not Four Horsemen Studios.com, Storehorseman.com, the old Store Horseman, which was the first in stock sale I ever was a part of and got something out of granted i did get romulus from one which he's kind of a good example of going back and taking a look at stuff i looked at prior because he is an older figure but i digress anyway the advent of decay cell was a bit less of a bloodbath to say the very least you were able to get your stuff and get out for the most part uh, some stuff sold out within a few hours but most of the stuff lasted about a day or so so it wasn't too too bad then after that, they did another in-stock sale the following year, towards the end of the summer. And that was from the pre-order that I initially partook in with my buddy Dismania65. They put up some extra stock up again, and that was it. Since then, they haven't really had a ton of Advent of Decay stuff available, other than the flash sales from this past summer. So, you know, if you missed out from anything from Advent of Decay, chances are you're going to have a chance to get it again. Because there hasn't been any of those characters in All-Stars, as far as I know, anyways. And I know there are even people who want, what's his name, Bothor, Bothar, the Tower. 
the big tall barbarian half giant character with a ram helmet uh, there are people who missed out on him and still want him so if you wait it out chances are you're going to be able to get what you want and not pay up the nose for it so with that being said i think it's time we finally get on with this re-review i will leave a link to my original review in the description below so you can see how i have in my opinion improved over time I, at least i hope i have if not well oh well <laughs> you can only get better i guess as much as my eyes will allow anyways but as far as this figure goes he does come with an alternate skull head Meh. has the hinged jaw missing tooth but I don't know, I don't like all my skeletons to look like Malleus, so I typically don't use these heads, though the hinge jaw is appreciated. I like to get one without the missing tooth and still have the hinge jaw. That'd be kind of nice, but whatever. And uh, if you are a super eagle-eyed viewer of this channel, yes, this is the tibius head. I'm just lazy and wasn't feeling up to digging out the mandibulus head because it's probably the same dang thing. Or at least close enough to get by. But other than that, his other accoutrements here. Yeah, he has his giant stabby weapon of death here, which was an original weapon with him. I kind of call it his quintessential weapon. It's this big kind of axe, spear, again, stabby lance pokey stick thing with some nice wrapping on it. I did have to touch up the paint down here somewhere or no it was right here because uh, i chipped some schmutz off to get it in his hand and you know how that works nothing a good old sharpie can't fix ah! knock stuff over and aside from that he does come with his other weapon of choice mandibulus here is kind of the uh the guy out front on the battlefield leading the charge, I imagine. Well, Malleus is more of a uh, tactical kind of guy. Has some precision in his attacks. And then Tibius is the uh, guy who will go in and clean house afterwards. Kind of pick up new recruits. That's what I'm getting based off the bios. But uh, he does come with this giant spiked club mace thing. Which you can pop the end off of. And the thing I never understood was the ends always kind of bobble on these. I mean, you can find the sweet spot so it doesn't do that as much, but something to note. But um, I will say the handle, if you take the the end off, you could use these as drumsticks. <laughs> Which uh, is convenient because I actually want to have a skeleton band in Mythic Legions, but I don't have a drum kit. I got guitars, but no drum kit. There's a spike club. Really cool weapon there. And then he comes with the traditional orc sword with kind of the bone handle and hilt. Looks like teeth. Uh, I'm not going to take that out because that is a pain in the butt to get in there. So, you know, uh, we're just going to leave that as is. But other than that, that's all he comes with. You know, he's got the shoulder pauldrons and whatnot. Basically, a 1.0 figure, but... Man, do the parts work on this guy. Look at this figure. And I will tell you, I did have trouble with one of his arms. This arm, the lower arm, where the elbow hinges and rotates, was popping off quite frequently. And uh, I knew something was up because it did not feel like it was pigging in all the way. And surprise, surprise, it was not. So I held this piece over the almighty heat duck and gave this a good little tug and shove. That's what she said. And I got it in there just fine. It's nice and tight now. No problems with it. So if you have that issue, that's a good way to fix it. And I have Elliot Leo of the Mythic Legions Cabal. Shout out to him to back me up on that because he did it as well and it worked. So if you have a problem like that, chances are that's what you got to do. I also took the liberty to use some uh, hot and cold water to warp the uh, elbow pad. And this kind of cup piece that wraps around the front of the... Uh, elbow joint to kind of close it up a bit because it was a little bit open but other than that i've had no issues with this guy he's probably my favorite figure in this line even though he is literally just 1.0 stuff 
nothing really new here other than the soft goods you can see he's got the tattered cloth pieces around his uh, waist kind of act like a tunic uh, they got some crusty blood paint apps on the ends of it it's all tattered and torn looks like he's been through hell and back really awesome design really awesome character and he's one of the quintessential members of the congregation of necronominus he is the brother of malleus and morgolith who i don't have handy for comparison uh, morgolith anyways i do have malleus sitting right over there actually so uh, we will be doing some comparisons to a couple other skeletons a little bit later but you know if you want to have the triad of death you got to have this guy right and j just look at that head sculpt. That's reminds me of the Batman Who Laughs or the Mouth of Sauron or some stuff like that. He's got these big kind of blades sticking off his gorget here. The big spiked shoulder pauldrons, the spiked gauntlets, the armored lower legs with kind of the bat wing knee pad thing going on and the spiked boots there. Just straight up evil looking mofo. And uh, the cool thing with this guy is he has a functioning visor. Now, be careful with this. You do not want to crack this piece, but you can slide it down. Slide it too far down. You can slide it down and cover his eyes with it if you want, making him look even more like the ISR on or Batman Who Laughs. Or if you're like me, I kind of prefer to have it sitting up on his helmet here but again you're gonna want to be careful not to crack this piece it is a PVC but you know any it's still plastic you could still crack it or damage it or whatnot much like my uh, air Theor visor which this I will at least say is thicker than that and feels a lot more pliable so shouldn't be as bad but just be careful with that. And I have to give a shout out to my buddy Tebiz. Shout out to Tebiz. As usual, that's probably something that's not going to change either. Uh, his brother Mandibulus came packaged this way. And he said you didn't have to unplug the visor to get the uh, visor to sit above his eyes. So I just gave it a little pinch and uh, lifted it up. And now that's how it sits. Because I love this skull face. That's brother Mandibulus to me. This is, where is it? This is Malleus to me. This is Brother Mandibulus to me. I love the way this looks. And he's got a hinged jaw. Which you can open all the way. Pretty cool. It's a little tricky to close, I will say. With all the stuff going on and the fact that my nails are not the longest right now. Um... And there is a bit of schmutz you got to fight with to get it up. But I, I just love the way this head sculpt came out. He's got the broken horn there. The curved horn there. He's got a horn on the top of his helmet. Or a spike anyways. Then he's got spikes on the ends of his visor. It just looks really cool. And uh, shout out to... Um, oh, there was somebody on Instagram who took this guy's helmet. Kind of tweaked it a bit. He removed the visor. Or she, I don't know who they were exactly it was many many years ago and they put the horns from the skeleton soldier builder on the side of this guy's head uh the parts are a little small for that but if you use a dremel you could hollow it out make him look even more like the horned king from the black cauldron which i gotta say this guy gives me that vibe so that is also really cool but as far as articulation goes on this guy it's the standard mythic legion stuff we're used to he's got a ball peg in the head so he can look up and down he can tilt he can look side to side the spinal column moves but it is pretty tight on mine shoulder pads will move out of the way so you can get to the arms here which will move forward and back and then they will move up and they will move down uh, he's got that bolted on armor on his upper arm here which looks painful, but he's a skeleton, so chances are they don't really feel pain. Something to note there. Uh, then he's got a single joint at the elbow, which I didn't think you used to get 90 degrees out of these. I think you do. 
you can get just about 90 if not just shy of 90 so that's cool nice tight elbow there uh, his gauntlets will rotate his wrists will rotate and hinge a little bit loose in the wrists but not too bad i would say they're better than the uh first initial kickstarter figures uh, the advent of decay in the Colosseums when I got into this line and that seems to me like where they improved a lot of their QC uh, issues was that time period so you know not too shabby uh, he does have the ball peg in the waist you can move back forward side to side it's a little loose there but not too bad it is an older figure though so I'm gonna have to account for that and as far as his hips go, they do move out, they do move in, forward and back. He's got a thigh cut, single joint at the knee, swivel at the knee, and then he's got a swivel at the ankle with a rocker joint and a hinge, as well as peg holes at the bottom of his feet. So there is Brother Mandibulus in a nutshell. Really, really cool. I love this guy. And for those of you confused about his um, kind of tunic pieces, you're going to want the red side to line up with the red on this plastic piece and the black side to match up with the black on this plastic piece here because he's got one of those plastic uh, loincloths that hangs in the front. And my guess it's supposed to be kind of like a Harlequin pattern. You have the red and the black and the black and the red or vice versa, I guess. The red and the red and the black and the black. Not much like Harlequin from Batman. The only time that character's done me any good <laughs> is uh, figuring out how to lay this guy's tunic out. Because again, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a checker pattern uh, motif going on here. But I could be wrong. That's a question for uh, Eric Treadway and the Four Horsemen. Not yours truly, per se, but based off of what I can tell, that's how it's supposed to go. Because I've seen some people do it backwards, which, you know free to do whatever you want but i think it's got an intended look i think i can't confirm nor deny that giving him his weapons back here look at the size of this freaking giant blade here it, this you can impale like two guys at once with this thing And it's kind of funny, you know, I always say that this is his main weapon and uh, that the big old buster sword, broadsword, Morgolith comes with as her standard weapon, yet they gave them to the, um, the Fury Clan orc uh, soon after in the Soul Spiller wave. So that's kind of funny. Um... But at any rate, I I really do love this figure. I think they gave those weapons to the Deluxe Orc Legion Builder from the uh, Vigia game Kickstarter to the uh, Mythic Legions Tactics Deluxe figures that they were doing. But again, at any rate, that's Brother Mandibulus in a nutshell. I love this figure. But with that being said, let's take a look at some comparisons. First up, and as promised, here is Brother Mandibulus next to a couple other members of the Congregation of Necronominus. First up, we got his Bruski Malleus from All Stars 3.0 and Tibius from All Stars 4.0, which I took a look at just over a month ago now. And as you can see, these guys look absolutely fantastic together. I love the way these three look together. It's an awesome triad of awesome to say at the very least. These are hands down my top three favorite Mythic Legions figures of all time, not naming Belphegor for super biased reasons. If you watch my Belphegor review, you know exactly why he is more than likely my favorite, but that's another topic for another time. I have to say, though, I'm curious if in the Necronominus wave, which we should hopefully be seeing at next year's G-Con, if we will see any variants of these characters, particularly Malleus, because I feel like while Malleus is awesome, I love that figure. I mean, he's got to be cool, right? Walter Hagen has about 100 of those. 
shout out to Walter Hagen. I'm curious if we're going to get a Malleus that's a little bit more unique, because he's a bit more of a Legion builder, in my opinion. Not a whole lot of unique parts going on there. I mean, neither does Tibius, really, but he does have the racing stripes on his head and the unique belt piece, which I don't think any other characters utilize, so he's at least got that going for him, along with the tattered cape. Same with Brother Mandibulus, he's at least got his own unique head sculpt, and even Morgolith has her own unique head sculpt and torso piece, and I believe a couple other parts are a little bit more unique on her, but don't hold me to that. So I'm curious if Malleus will get the 2.0 treatment. I think he deserves it. I would like to see what else they could do with that character, maybe make a more regal-looking Malleus, because as I said before, he's more of a tactics guy. He's not in the heat of battle like his brother Mandibulus there. No pun intended. Okay, maybe a little bit. So with that being said, yeah, I'm looking forward to next year's G-Con, man. Necronominus is my favorite team. As far as Mythic Legions goes, I'm Team Necronominus all the way. Can't wait to see what they have to show for that. And last, but certainly not least, we have, well, one of our two regulars, the infamous Okay, 11 spawn, and then we have one of what used to be one of our two regulars, the Marvel Legends Rider Series Ghost Rider. At least I believe it was this one and not the one from the Rhino Wave. Don't hold me to that. But if you go back to last year and check out most, if not all, of my reviews from last year, chances are this Ghost Rider is one of the two regulars for the size comparisons, at least up until... Maybe a year ago when I started utilizing Brother Mandibulus, not only as the channel mascot, but also one of the two regulars for size comparisons. But don't get it twisted. We may be out with the old and in with the new. Brother Mandibulus is still going to be one of the two regulars for size comparisons, I assure you. Because while we may have made some changes, some things are better off left alone. So with that being said, time to wrap things up. Final thoughts. Overall, and you don't need me to tell you how awesome this figure is, you already know. He's the mascot of this channel and in most of my videos for comparisons nowadays for a reason. So with that being said, I would highly recommend you vote for this guy when he becomes available in an All-Stars poll. This is definitely one you want to add to your Mythic Legions collection your Necronominus ranks, whatever you want to call it, this is one you want to have. It's a really awesome figure, and I feel sorry for anyone who missed out on this guy because he is definitely one of the best figures in the line thus far, in my opinion. And I'm going to drop the gauntlet here, or drop the hammer, whatever you want to call it. This is the first inductee into the Overlord Action Figure Hall of Fame for the year 2021. That's right! Screw doing a video! I am inducting this guy early because he is that awesome. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you are so inclined, please hit that notification bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one because we got to show that algorithm who's boss, right? If you haven't already, hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. And don't forget to check out the Mythic Legions Cabal over on Facebook and or Instagram. Be a part of the community. But as always, please keep the comments civil. Because the world sucks enough as it is. Especially when I know that there are people out there who missed out on such an awesome figure like this one. And stay tuned. I am going to be doing more than one of these videos, potentially even this month. That Ghost Rider is a good contender for what I might do for the next video like this. Uh, don't expect it all the time. The month of December is kind of dry, so I figured why not fill it out with some older figures I may or may not have looked at before, but deserve to be looked at and quite possibly be inducted into the Overlord Action Figure Hall of Fame like this guy right here. So with that being said, until next time, I will catch you guys later.